seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now pick this up. If you'll seek first the kingdom of God, well, to seek the kingdom of God, for instance, right now I'm sitting on my back porch, but this is not the kingdom of this house. This is the, this is the front, this is the back porch of this house, but there's a door over there. There's a window over here. And to get into that kingdom, I have to penetrate that window. I have to penetrate that window. And the Bible says, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here with, saith the Lord of hosts, if I'll not open you the windows of heaven. Now then you can seek the kingdom of God. I can seek all over this backyard. I can seek all over the garage. I can seek all over the front yard. I can look in the mailbox. Cannot understand what's in this kingdom here that's called the residence of John and Pat Avanzini and the residence of God's children the kingdom. How do I get in there? I've got to go through a window. It's, wow. <laughs> we have to come in almost like a thief. We have to go in through a window. And how do you get to that window? You're tired. And, you and this is the, this is the thing that is missing. It's missing. We have had such a minimization of the, of the importance of money. Every ministry is pushing down. Well, we're not after your money. We're not this. Oh, well, we're not going to have an offering. Well, don't worry. We're not here to get you. Listen, your money's your life. I mean, if, if you get me involved, my money will be involved. And until my money's involved, my heart can't be involved. I had a fellow one time. Am I taking too long? No, no sir. No. Take your time. I had, a fellow one, I had a fellow one time was a youth pastor and a good one. And he opened a business and he got very busy in that business. And uh, he was a, a, a layman doing the youth department and a tremendous job. And uh, he got tied up and he couldn't come anymore. He had to stop from help. And the first thing he wasn't in church anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I went by to see him and I, uh, I said, uh, we need you back. And he said, I want to get back in church. I need to get back in church. I said, well, come. So he didn't show up again, maybe one time, and then didn't come again for a while. So I was back at his house again. I could almost say his name right now, but I won't. And I said, do you really want to get back in church? Do you really want to get back in relationship with, with my ministry and with, with, with uh, Pat and my ministry and the, the church that we pastor? He said, I want it with all my heart, but I can't. I work and I'm tired and I'm this and I'm that. I said, well, you sit down and you write 13 tithe checks and you, multi, you, you separate them one week apart for 13 weeks and hand them to me, please. And I will drop one in for you every week, whether you're there or not. And I guarantee you that before I'm through with the last one, you will be regular in church again because you cannot have your heart touched if your wealth is not touched because where your treasure is, there is where your heart will be. Yes. So the biggest fool in town is the person that fools themselves. You know, over the years, your relationship with me, uh, I didn't ask you for anything, but you have consistently had a tie to me with your finances. I mean, I never put a, 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 a wage on being related to me, but it always, it's always, it's there. And now, I have people with, now with, I'm not bragging to you, but people all over the world would like for me to sit and talk like this with them, but I can't do it. But I can't say no to you because you've attached yourself to me. You have vulcanized yourself to me. We're joined at the hip. Why? Because where a person's treasure is, there's where their heart will be. And people right now that love, love you, that are watching right now, and they have such an empathy for you, they really don't understand yet how the Christian, the Christian relationship can be that a call can come from around the world and you'll organize yourself and you'll be there for that person until there is that relationship with finances. And what you do takes finances and people that listen to you and that really want to go beyond having it go in here and having it go in here as they attach to you financially 
they will find themselves as if they're in the room with you. They will be able to call on you at an immediate response. I cannot overemphasize that. With all respect, with all respect, all the people that love Brother John and all the people that in airports, are you Brother John? Would you sign my book? Would you do this? All those things are magnificent, beautiful things. But the people down now in this time of my life, after 60 plus years of ministry, that literally have access to me are the people. And it's not that I'm, you know, I have money. I'm not trying to get people's money. But I know that when finances come to me from somebody, that they now have said, here's a piece of my life. Because if, if, if say that they put down with you an hour's wages, that's an hour of their life that they've given you. If it, what, whatever, the, however they respond in their finances, it's beyond anything that anybody can imagine because your money is your life. It literally is your life. At the end of a 40 hour week, work week or 30, whatever the work week might be in your area. When you finish that, you have now been given back in a new dimension, that which you laid down. You laid down a one dimensional life doing what they wanted you to do shoveling, writing, phoning, whatever the thing is they hired you to do. You are doing what they want you to do for 40 hours. Now then, they have given you something different than what you gave them. You gave them something one-dimensional. You gave them your time. Now they've given you money. They gave money to you for that time that you spent working for them. Now they have made you omnipresent in that, in that form because you can be in China, you can be in Africa, you can be anywhere that you can send that money to be. It's the most powerful dimension that you have as a human being is your finances. And I, with all respect, thank you very much when people tell me we're praying for you and I need prayer. We all need prayer. And thank you very much when you say, well, we're going to be at the meeting. But there's something else when someone says, I'm going to help with the finances to see that what you teach and what you preach goes out throughout the whole world. There's a vulcanizing takes place that ties you together. Oh, we have a rich heavenly father. He loves us. And, uh, but one of the beautiful things about it is he blesses us financially that we can be a blessing. 